Brady, collage artist and writer, and I'm here at the historic Thayer Memorial Library in Lancaster, Mass. I'm going to take you inside to do a tour of my latest exhibit, Critters and Cake and Checkerboard Landscapes. Behind the camera is Cheryl Collins of Collins Artwork. Hi, Cheryl. So come on in, we'll take the tour. We're going to go to the reference room, probably. That's Nancy, the assistant director. Hi, Nancy. Over here on this wall is my latest exhibit. Come on down. collage art made with colored paper as well as acrylic paints and a pen. And what I'm going to do is sort of read the original verse that goes along with it, and then I'll go back and tell you about each one of the paintings. So what's going to happen is as I'm reading, um, Cheryl's going to go from painting to painting. So, But I'll be back to give you a little bit more scoop about each piece after I finish, okay? The, uh, the name of the poem that goes along with the, uh, the paintings is called My Fifth Birthday Cake. Okay, we'll start over here. My fifth birthday cake was yellow, with some polka dots of pink. It smelled of sweet, sweet sugar and lemon essence, or so I think. The trim, it was blue in color, in addition to some green. It was by far the most beautiful fifth birthday cake I had ever seen. I blew out all the candles and made my fifth birthday party wish. I asked for a golden tiger a green frog, and a big fish. The tiger, a large bengal, soon appeared at my front door. He crept right into the kitchen and stretched out lengthwise on the floor. He stared upon the oven and licked his lips not once but twice. He craved the roast that was within, or at least a real big slice. The frog hopped in quite softly and found a corner in which to rest. I was inspired by the beauty of my exquisite rainforest guest. His body, bright green and slimy, with two bulging red-red eyes. They reminded me of saucers, or two big, big cherry pies. The fish I soon found swimming in a pond in the backyard. His size was quite enormous, and it caught me quite off guard. Yet he swam beneath the water with great grace and with great ease. He was polite and rather chatty, always saying thank you and yes, please. It was then that I did notice a black feather all afloat. It was gliding among the lilies like a silent feathered boat. I wondered where it came from. Was it a raven or a crow? <coughs> Excuse me. But for all of my own wondering, I am sure to never know. It made me think of sprouting wings and soaring in the air. I ever so wanted to wish for it. Should I do it? Do I dare? And then, without a second thought, I made a silent wish. I wished to fly above the pond and look down upon the fish. It was then that I started shrinking and grew small and rather slight. But how would all the shrinking ever help me to take flight? I stood among the grasses, the brown soil and the slugs. I looked up to see a monarch, a dragonfly, and ladybug. The butterfly swooped down upon me and I jumped upon its wings. I held on tight and listened as the wind began to sing. We flew high above the gardens, all the homes and nearby hills. Up high, everything was quiet, very soothing, very still. The land was like a checkerboard with colored hues of dark and light. At times, it was like a harlequin with spots of black and spots of white. Our voyage eventually ended, though, and I knew what I had to do. I had to use another wish to go back in time before I flew. I needed to grow up again and return to normal size. No sooner had I thought it, did I grow before my eyes. My fifth birthday, it had magic, and my five wishes all came true. I can't wait for next year's party, because this is what I'll do. I'll wish for a few more animals, maybe a toucan and a snake. Then I'll think of four more wishes to match the six candles on my cake. Thank you, Terry. That was a beautiful reading. Thank you so much.